All right, it's pretty amazing that we have so many red hatters here. So take advantage, right? This is my favorite part of OpenShift Commons is the AMA. So we're gonna do a quick round of intros and then we'll get your questions answered, all right? So I'm Karina Angel. I am one of the OpenShift product managers and my focus area is cloud packs. If you've heard of our partner, IBM, right? Um, we have a collection of software called Cloud Packs, and I focus on that as well as upstream projects. Uh, my name is Daniel O. I'm developer advocate on Java and OpenShift, a lot of stuff, several so last service mesh thing. Yeah. Hand over to Daniel. Right, Daniel, uh, you didn't even say the word Quarkus. Oh, yeah, sure. oh, come on. Yeah, I'm in the Kubernetes Java stack, Quarkus. I'm on the main responsibility. And I'm also the CNCF ambassador. Just let me know anything about CNCF project. I'm Daniel Messer. I'm a product manager at OpenShift for Red Hat Quay, Quay.io, and the operator lifecycle manager. Ramon Acedo Rodriguez, product manager for OpenShift. My focus area is uh, OpenShift on bare metal. Um, Jan Schafranek, I'm not a product manager. I'm a software engineer for storage. Kirsten Newcomer, OpenShift product management focused on Kube and container security. Ramon Roman here, yet another product manager for the migration toolkit for applications and very involved in the conveyor community. Connor Gorman, I'm an engineer on the ACS and StackRox team. Perfect. All right. So I know this is the hard part. It's the end of the day. Does anyone have a question? Or are we going to be making softball questions for these folks? There's a question here. And you've got the, the other mic. Yeah, Mike's the mic. got the mic. So right over here. Nice. So how does this OpenShift and OKD really relate? Who's upstream, who's downstream, or is it just a mesh? Ah. Christian, well, where are you? I think Christian and, and Vadim, we sent them off to go talk to one of the other upstream projects. However, um, I have been working in the OKD world for, oh, I think I have a microphone. I'm, I'm the one person who's still mic'd up. Um, yeah. I like to call OKD a sibling stream, OK? so. It is built on the same release process as um, by the OpenShift um, CI CD build process. So um, it is, Kubernetes is really our upstream for, uh, for OpenShift and OKD and all of the other um, things that we build um, with OpenShift. But it, so I, I would call it a sibling stream. And we have a really great relationship with the Fedora Core OS team. And we do most of the testing and deployment within the OKD working group. Um, on the different variations of um, where people like to deploy it. So if you go to Google Groups, there is an OKD working group. If you go to the Kubernetes Slack channel and to OpenShift-users, you can find the OKD working group and get involved. So good question. He gets the t-shirt. All right. Any other questions here? There's one over here. I'm making Michael the tallest man in the room. Hello, uh, thanks for all the presentation, very interesting today. Um, I have some question about uh, migration toolkit, conveyor, and also uh, security about Sigstor. Um, does all these uh, products um, uh, are supported in disconnected mode? And are there any uh, requirements or for that? Uh, migration toolkit for applications, you mean, in, in the whole conveyor uh, suite? or? Yeah, but even uh, application and containers. Uh. Both migration and six store. Do you want to get migration first? Yeah, I can go. I can go for my migration. So, uh, uh, in the Khmer project, I mean, uh, it depends where where your uh, origin is. What what is your source for migrating applications into into Kubernetes? Uh, I don't know if you would be interested in uh, application coming from. Uh, let's say, uh, legacy, classic uh, runtime platforms, or what, what kind yes, of yes. A migration are we talking about? Yeah, more about legacy application. OK, so for, for applications, it doesn't matter that much the, uh, the um, 
deployment model that you might have for, for Kubernetes. We focus on assessing the application portfolio. That will be a questionnaire-driven assessment. And then on the analysis, we will be working mostly with uh, source code and, and binaries. So we wouldn't be that interested on the, on the plat flat sorry, platform itself. Then, for example, with Move to Cube, you would be able to, based on the application type that, that you are migrating, let's say you have a Java application running on Tomcat, Move to Cube is able to understand what kind of application you are based on the, on the de dependencies and generate the deployment manifest. So not so much about the kind of deployment model you might have. I don't know if that answered your question. Perfect. Yes, but it, it was also about the, um, uh, when we have an uh, OpenShift cluster in, di in disconnected mode, air gap mode. Does the all, uh, all the thing that I think there was an analysis tool with AI and so on, the IBM uh, modules in, uh, in the uh, migration toolkit, does they need to access internet or services or? Uh, Okay. Sorry, maybe it's more yeah, yeah, clear yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem because the uh, knowledge base is built in the process, uh, project itself. So we wouldn't need a uh, direct connection to the internet. Everything is pretty self-contained, or can work in self-contained uh, mode. Right now, I'm not sure about the uh, design. I know the current design for the AI. Uh, thingy powering the uh, IBM research tooling is self-contained, but I do know that they were thinking about having some central knowledge base or something like that, but I don't have the details about how this thing will evolve in the future. But for the moment, as it is right now, it's self-contained. Thank you. Welcome. And so quite the same question for uh, Six Star. Yeah, so, um so you're asking specifically what, what can I use with SigStore in a disconnected mode, right? So as Luke said earlier today, SigStore has kind of multiple components. So creating, you know, using a OpenShift pipeline and connecting the ACS scanner, connecting with Quay if, or what other, whatever registry you have, all of that can be done in a disconnected environment. Tecton chains can run in a disconnected environment. The ACS uh, image uh, admission controller to validate the signature, all of that can be disconnected. A piece of the puzzle that right now, we have not yet shipped uh, an instance of ReCor, which is the signature transparency log. So if you need to validate that signature, if you, if you need to check you know, audit the transparency log. Right now, that's not something that would be available on premises. It is in our plans to make it, you know, to ship something that then you could deploy yourself. To ship a ReCore operator, you could deploy an instance of ReCore yourself. But right now, the ReCore, I think there's an instance available from uh, Linux Foundation, but that is an, an online access. So, so eventually. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. All right, there's another question. Hi. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, if we wanted to start with a, like a, we've, we've begun our cloud journey and we've built some um, arrow clusters and uh, we've got our dev and our prod, and we want to start creating our DR instance, which we've already deployed, but how do we begin that journey of actually creating that replication in between, let's say, our prod cluster and what we want to set up as our DR cluster in case you know a disaster actually hits and we need to start, obviously, I'm pretty sure there's some documentation on it, but if you were to just give some general advice of where you begin that journey, that would be helpful. All right, who's the disaster recovery person? All right, we're gonna- so, yeah, the, the question is about disaster recovery and uh, strategies, strategies with disaster recovery mm -hmm. with OpenShift. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a, a difficult question because uh, OpenShift is um, designed for um, applications that you can distribute, right? So most of the time what you do is you have the disaster recovery layer 
above OpenShift at the application layer. And then you will take care of your application being properly distributed. Having said that, obviously, OpenShift has um, in every cluster um, mechanisms for, um, you know, if one node goes down, then there's an evacuation, uh, another node uh, can take over the workloads. That happens, that's by default that you have it. I'm not sure if your question is more about... I it's, have it's more like if your, your clusters are in different regions all together, you want to make sure that in yeah. case... I yeah. think our yeah. Azure yeah. guy has a, a, an answer. I'll stay away from you so I can remove the mask. <laughs> All right. um, that's cloud exclusive, but it's not too exclusive. Um, now it depends. Uh, hot, 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 cold, and that's where you start from. Um, now with the cluster itself, it depends on... Uh, let's start by the simplest one, hot, cold, right? Um, your cluster will... Um, you have a definition for your cluster. For instance, in the cloud, you can have an ARM template to deploy your Azure Red Hat OpenShift cluster, or Terraform, or an Ansible book, whatever. So that's where you start with. So you're going to have that Ansible book that is deployed in a different repository in a different region, right, that you can access in case of disaster. So that's the coldest possible thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have the cluster deployed as well in the different region. That's a bit hot, right? Then we're going to move to the applications. Now, on the application end, uh, the, the question is, do you have a stateful or a stateless cluster? And a stateless cluster, that's the easiest possible thing, right? So I have my pipeline, it can split the applications into two clusters, right? So I have this, my front end application that will be deployed in region one, and this, and at the same time, we can deploy it in region two. Then I need to have a global load balancer that can point to two clusters, assuming I need to you know, have an active, active setup, for instance, right? Now, when it comes to the stateful workloads, this is where things get interesting. Don't do stateful workloads unless you need them, right, inside the cluster. So in the cloud, what we advocate customers to do is, hey, go and use a managed service, because that managed service has the underlying backup and disaster recovery and replication underlying in it, right? So uh, you just point to a MySQL server or a MySQL Azure MySQL service that does a logical replication to a different region, and then your data will be there, and then your front-end application that live in an OpenShift cluster, you just need to deploy them in, in the other end. Now, if you have a stateful cluster, for instance, you have MySQL running in the cluster, um, the folks at Cockroach, they figured it out, they have logical replication on the application level, but that's not the yeah, case for the rest of the things, like MySQL or Postgres or MongoDB and so on. There, you're gonna have to have a backup and restore solution, for instance, right? Um, uh, one of the most popular ones in the community is Valero, right? So you can snapshot that underlying data and then restore it in some other region and, you know, keep restoring it in some other region and, you know, point the um, uh, other cluster to that database, right? So that's, that's how you think of it. And uh, it's, it's a matter of cost and complexity. You can go for active, active, and that's going to be the most expensive one. You can go for active cold, and that's the least expensive one. But it depends now RTO and RPO discussion, right? Hopefully that answered the question. Hi. Right. Thank you. Thanks. I think this was a great answer, and I think you heard a theme, right? So it depends on what you need to restore. Um, ideally, you would start by uh, applying GitOps from the very first day. That will maintain your desired state and configuration all in Git, which you can just redeploy in your DR cluster. There is this question about data restoration, data movement, right? So on the roadmap this morning, you may have already heard this. But Red Hat ACM will have a orchestrated failover process this year that relies on background asynchronous data replication and movement of the application definitions themselves to a DR cluster. So this is a, going to be a first class concept in ACM, um, which will uh, rely on ACM's native capability to apply and manage application manifests across clusters. It's a cluster management stack after all. And it also integrates with the Vault Sync project, which is how we asynchronously in the background replicate data between persistent volumes of different clusters. And this is what you would set up. It will continuously run in the background. There is obviously a recovery point, a recovery time objective, because it's asynchronous, right? You know, there are costs to these things. So in a DR uh, recovery case being so rare, um, it's probably acceptable that there is some loss of data. But eventually, um, uh, it will be a feature in ACM uh, to be able to carry over and, uh, the, the workload if the cluster has failed and restart it in the DR cluster in a very orchestrated fashion as in first class ACM concept. All right. 
We've got one question down in front, and this is. Hi, um, I have a question about the conveyors, you know, combating application to the modern, modernizing applications. Do you have any plan to support cloud foundry application? Because, you know, HCL guys are offering support, are offering that service as a commercial service, but for the conveyor project. Is, that what you were is it working? Yes. yes. Their tool is based on move to cube. So uh, they are already, they are, uh, most of their tool is already based on, on conveyor projects. So what, what they're doing, what we're trying to do with conveyor is try to address all the different scenarios out there with, first of all, answering your question. Yes, we do support that migration path. Mm -hmm. Move to Cube supports that. And HCL is using Move to Cube to power their tooling. Oh, okay. All right. So that's, that's, that's the, the, the whole thing. Yeah, I'm going to add one comment. So the, under the conveyor project, they have moved to Cube tool. So we can use that tool to uh, migrate from Cloud Foundry application to the Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So once you run the move to Cube command line, you got a bunch of the YAML file based on how to deploy the manifest and Kubernetes, like a deployment and a services, something like that. You can also generate a bunch of the YAML file for OpenShift cluster as well. So it's still CRI stuff, but we are some working on to make it fancier. In All right. The future. Okay. Thanks so much. Oh. Oh. And there's always another answer. And <laughs> to add some some stuff on top of that, we are currently working on integrating the move to cube experience on top of Tackle. So you will be able from your application portfolio. Uh, generate the deployment manifests that move to cube generates and have them fully integrated within your uh, git repository so the whole idea is for a developer to push a button and have have everything in the repository for them to start making changes and migrating the application and deploying it on the target flow, uh, platform from day one mm, okay thanks so much so do we have another question right behind you mike you ought to be able to reach right there Hello. Uh, another question uh, on conveyor project. Okay. Uh, do you support other languages than Java? Uh, uh, no JS. That's that's the uh, the usual one. For the moment, no. For the analysis bit of it, okay. so assessment is language agnostic. But for the analysis bit of it, for the moment, we're focused on Java. But we would like to bring in .NET and other languages uh, as well. But we're still uh, waiting to get contributors that can provide that, that thing. So what we did with Tackle 2, for example, was to create an add-on oriented architecture that allows us to expand easily what we are building. And what we, what we would like to have now is have other add-ons that can analyze different languages rather than the, 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 the main Tackle analysis having to do that. So you don't have it on the roadmap yet? Uh, sadly, no. Okay. Uh, we would love to have other vendors involved in that. We have some involvement, so it might happen. I did want to point out that if you go to conveyor.io, you can contribute. <laughs> you like. yeah, we highly encourage you to, to join the, Thank you. the community. We will be happy to get your contributions. <laughs> okay. uh, and, uh, Right. Second question is about um, multi-architecture clusters. Uh, is it possible or when is it possible to have, uh, let's say, x86 cluster with some worker nodes running on, let's say, power, IBM power? So at the moment, you probably were here this morning, uh, we have x86 and ARM. Um, this is in the roadmap. I don't know exactly. We can check that out uh, when this is coming. This is coming, but uh, the answer is we will allow uh, multi uh, architectures in a single cluster, and these two architectures won't be the only ones. Um, you know how far this is down the line, and I don't know, but uh, this this will happen. And how does it relates to uh, hypershift? Hypershift is a different concept. Uh, with Hypershift, what you will have is um, one cluster that hosts multiple control planes in one cluster. And then what you really want is different worker nodes associated with every control plane uh, working against that cluster, right? Um, 
you might, I'm thinking about this now for the first time, you may be able to combine that. Why not? Because uh, we're talking about two OpenShift uh, features, right? So OpenShift will support HyperShift on the one hand and uh, multiple architectures in one single cluster because we already support multiple architectures uh, on the other hand. So you will have the two. How related they are, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe you will, <laughs> because you're going to have many more ways to architect your, you know, your topology, to design your cluster. But it's two separate uh, topics at the moment. Okay, thank you. All right. One more question. I think this is going to be our last question because we're oh. hitting up the 5 p.m. Thank you. Uh, I'm represent, representing IBM client engineering, but uh, as you might see, I'm former Red Hatter. So as far as I remember, the OpenShift uh, 4.1 was released like three years ago. So my question, very simple. Any plans for the OpenShift 5? <laughs> I think we have a lot of work with OpenShift 4 at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.